Hi, this is Andrew Gibson from Patriots News Network. Today I have a special guest, Aaron Pine, who's a Stafford Township school nurse who's currently being suspended without pay for refusing to wear her mask. Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for taking the time to interview me. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Okay, so let's let's start from the beginning. Um, uh, for those of you, for those people who are not aware, can you give us a brief description of, of, of what happened very briefly? Yeah, um, so I advocated against masks to my supervisor um, and explained to her why I, what I was seeing and um, gave her some information on the science behind the masks and how they're supposed to be used and how they should be used if they're going to be used safely. I didn't get a good response from her, um, just that we were going to be continuing to follow the mask mandate put in place. And um, when I explained to her that I was uh, not comfortable following a dangerous mandate that was harmful to children, I kind of got some radio silence there. So after that, I decided to go ahead and make um, a bigger statement by just letting them know that I was not going to be wearing my mask at work anymore. Um, the next day, I was suspended without pay after doing that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, I think it's common for a lot of people, you know, since last March, uh, I think it's fair to say that people's minds have changed over time for, for most people, you know, uh, even for me in the very beginning, I have two kids. I, we were told there was going to be bodies in the street. We were told, you know, there was going to be the apocalypse, um, you know, out of natural, uh, I was scared in the very beginning too. Luckily, um, I, w I woke up. Uh, pretty early on. Uh, but in, in the beginning for you, uh, you have children, you said? Yeah, I have three kids. Three kids, right. Um, so what, in the beginning, how were your thoughts about the whole COVID-19 and the precautions and all the hysteria? And have they changed over time? Or did you just always kind of feel, um, um, what's the word? Uh, did you did you question in the beginning or did you have to come kind of to? Um, I, in the beginning, I was concerned a little bit because it was a new virus. I followed it even when we were just getting the um, notifications that there was a new virus in China. So I was following it way in the beginning. And uh, even before they started testing here in New Jersey, I made a video, um, I think it was March 6th, and I posted it on my Facebook, um, just letting people know, like, hey, COVID is here. Yeah, we're not seeing it in testing. We're not, you know, we're not doing a testing unless you are, you know, there was like a certain steps that you had to do in order to get tested. The, the New Jersey Department of Health, the County Department of Health, and the CDC needed to approve you before they would even test you. Right. I so you that. had to have like a certain amount of symptoms. So I was, I remember, you know, I was telling people to make sure you wash your hands, you know, don't touch your face, cover your mouth, and, uh, you know, just, just basic prevention methods to stop getting a virus, you know, right. I did, I wasn't, um, you know, as concerned as a lot of people were because I did understand that 80% back then, I know that it's even more now, but back then 80% were being told as mild, you know, I think 15% were severe and 5% were critical. That was back in March of 2020. Right. Um, now we know that it's, that it's, you know, still pretty mild for most people. Now we know a little bit more about it. So I think in my original, in the beginning, I was telling people, you know, be careful, do this, do your, do your safety, if, you know, of washing hands and stuff. Um, but also that it was not something to have like hysteria over because I knew that most of this, most of the symptoms with this respiratory virus were mild. Okay. Um, now I think the difference that I have now is, we know more about it. We know that we're doing a so much testing and, you know, we have so many, so many places to test and everybody's getting tested. It's almost like if you have a runny nose, you go get tests, you know? Um, so we've got a lot of positive cases, but it, it's not something still to be hysterical about because we do know that a lot of those people are having mild symptoms and almost, you know, some people aren't having symptoms if right. not. You know, so yes, we have a high high rate of cases, but we also have to look at the you know the data that we have in the hospitals and you know the the rates like that to to really understand that it's okay, it's it's a virus, and most people will have a mild mild reaction to it. Right. Exactly. Okay. So when okay, so now they open up the schools again. They start letting the, the kids back, which was good. I remember they were masking people on the on the playground. They were um, 
which I thought was insane. But um, when they, they started the masking in the schools, uh, when you first went back, was there a point where you were like, well, you know, we got to get rolling here? Or was there, was there a time in your mind where you're like, well, you know, I guess we'll just have to do this for a little while to get it? Or were you always like, this makes no sense at all? Yeah, I kind of was of the mindset of this doesn't make sense with the masks. Right. Um, and, masks and, just don't work to prevent viruses. Right. I saw your interview uh, today uh, and you were talking about the improper use of masks. And, and I think that's important. If you Can you touch on that again for people listening, uh, what the dangers sure. of that are? Yeah. So if you're going to, well, first of all, you have to know, you know, what the masks, what they're supposed to be intended for. Um, in the hospital, if you're doing, if you're in surgery, you're going to wear a surgical mask. Um, and the sur- it's not to keep your not to contain you, your your breath or um, germs, but to keep it out of the immediate field of the person in front of you who's in surgery. So, you know, it's still coming out through the sides of your mask. Um, so if you were to potentially sneeze, you're not going to lean back and open, turn your head because then it's going to come out through the side and it's going to sneeze. Your sneeze is going to go right into the open field of the patient. <laughs> so that's the reason why you're going to use, you know, a surgical mask. If I'm doing wound care on a person like a, a wound vac or something like that where there's a potential for it to be, you know, messy, I might want to put on a, a mask to protect myself or an eye shield or something like that. Um, it's never, it's not to protect me from viruses or things and stuff like that. For an N95, a lot of times those are used for like patients who have tuberculosis. Um, the mask, you can't just slap it on your face and use it. It's got to be fit tested. You um, And in the hospital, what they do is they um, they take you, that you have an in-service, they, te- they fit your face for a mask, they use a spray, they spray it on the mask, and if you smell it, then they know that there's a leak, and then they, they give you a new mask. So then you have this different one, and you, you test that one and make sure that it's fit. If the N95 has leaks in it, it's not going to protect you from tuberculosis, which, by the way, is... I, I want to say it's 10 times larger than COVID-19. So um, it's just the masks were never meant to protect you from viruses. But if you are going to wear a mask, there's a right way and a wrong way to wear it. Right. Uh, it's just for, so it to be, could be safe for you. So you want to wash your hands before you touch your mask. Then when you go to put your mask on, you have to use it from the, from the clean area. So you want to touch or, you know, a, a dirty, a, an area that you can touch that's not going to, you know, um, cross contaminate your mask. So you would take the ear loops and carefully put it on your face without touching the outside of the mask. Before you put the mask on, you want to notate that that's the outside of the mask. If you plan to reuse it, you want to make sure that you notate, like put a little star on the outside or something so that you know that's the outside. Put it on your face, with touching only the ear loops. Then after you put it on, you wash your hands again. Now, once you've done that, you can wear it for when you're going to wear it. When you go to take it off, you're going to wash your hands before, take it off by the ear loops, gently fold it so that the inside is folded in, and then you want to store it in a, in a paper bag or a sealed plastic baggie or something like that. The next time you use it, you have to, you know, again, hand hygiene, take it out in a certain way, make sure you don't use the outside onto your face because now you're, that's a dirty spot. Now you don't want to put that back, those germs back on your face. So that's not what we're seeing with kids and with adults using these masks. They're right. taking them, you know, they're putting them on their desk. They're putting them in their pocket, in their book bag. Adults are keeping them in their car, in the rear mirror, or putting them in the, you know, the cup holder that's filthy. And, <laughs> you know, so, and then that's just, that's just making it really cross-contaminated. And right. the problem is bacteria is very large and it doesn't come through the pores of the mask like a virus would. So instead, the bacteria gets clogged up all in your mask, and then as you're reusing it, and it's got more and more bacteria on it, that bacteria is sitting in your on your face, you know, causing people to have acne or bacterial infections. Um, kids, you know, with swollen lips or sores and things, and then you have the potential for even more serious things like a, a secondary pneumonia um, from bacteria. So. That is the concern, and the way that you're supposed to use a mask is, uh, is definitely not, um, it's not realistic for kids, and it's not, it's not really 
it's very difficult to get it done right. And even if you did it right, it's still not effective to prevent, you know, most viruses the size of COVID-19, like the, like, you know, anything like the flu or something like that either. Right. You know, my son is five. Um, we, he went to kindergarten last year and I remember them teaching them how to wash their hands, <laughs> you know, and, you know, it's, it's sing happy birthday twice. And, uh, you know, for a four or five, even a six year old to, to comprehend that sometimes is a challenge. I, I, I can't even imagine trying to explain that whole process to, you know, even a high schooler is going to mess that up. You know, that's a whole course in, in that. You know, I, I was an EMT and a medic in the army and we had, uh, you know, I still had to be like drilled into us. So I, I don't even know, how, even if it was effective to, uh, to, to, you know, filter out the COVID uh, germ or virus, you, you could expect uh, children to do it or adults, you know, everyone, you know, we, we got driver's license, but nobody knows how to drive anyway, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the hand washing thing is really like, that's the saving grace here. That's what we need to be focused on um, to, to prevent Right. To prevent this. And I, I did a lot of hand washing videos with my school last year. I would go to each classroom. I had this like blue light stuff and um, I would give kids high five with they didn't know that I had this powder on my hand. And then I would say, oh, no, I forgot to wash my hands before I came in and we turn off the lights. And whoever gave me a high five got to see that their, their hands were you know, glowing. <laughs> so then we learned about how to do hand washing and bubble gloves is really good. If you've got a little kid at home, you got to make sure that, cause a lot of times they'll just put their hands under the water, you know, they're not really, yeah, they're they play with the water. Them. They play with it. They, they think they're, yeah. yeah. So if you could tell them, you know, singing the ABCs is good, but also like, you know, bubble gloves is the best. They really, kids really like to make the bubbles. So you just be like, Oh, you have to make sure it covers your whole hand like a glove and get in between and in your nails and, um, that really gets them excited to wash their hands. So okay, <laughs> yes, it's a visual. They can see where they've cleaned. That's mm -hmm. interesting or good. Ah, well, you know, I got to tell you, I'm uh, out of uh, rebellion. I haven't washed my hands either since March, so I just, you know, <laughs> it's for the cause. <laughs> got to stand, right, yeah. got to stand up for something. Okay, so uh, my children, uh, a lot of people who listen to this. Um, um, in, in my immediate group, you know, we've pulled our children because we don't want them exposed to the the mandates and the fear and 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 whatever the heck is going on in, until it's figured out in school. But you're there, and so yeah. if you could give us some insight as to, um, like I, I know some sometimes you know you could take your your mask off for when you're eating, but then put it back on. But like you didn't even like you could sit in a classroom perhaps. I know when I go to school, I can sit in the classroom all day with my mask on and then mm -hmm. at break and lunch, I could take the mask off to eat and then put it right back on and not leave my seat. So are there things like are there things that are happening there that, you know, we're trying to get insight on what's going on in the school um, and it, with these children? Um, have you seen any injuries like I know you mentioned sores uh, or maybe, maybe acne or whatever or. Any troubles like that uh, that's affecting the way, uh, affecting their learning? Affecting their learning, yeah. Um, I've seen, so, yes, I've seen some kids with sores and with, you know, acne or stuff like that. Um, I have, I think that it's the fear and the anxiety. You know, I've seen a lot of kids coming in that, that are just having a lot of stomach aches and nervousness that you wouldn't that you wouldn't see as much in a regular year. It's definitely affecting them emotionally. Um, I would say for the younger kids developmentally, of course, because, you know, with these little kindergartners and preschoolers and even first graders, second graders, they're learning how to interact with each other. They're learning how to become adults by recognizing facial, you know, yeah. facial expressions and sure. stuff like that. So, um, you know, and, and same thing, like, your teacher's trying to teach you something and you can't see her face. You can only see her eyes. And so, you know, it, is my teacher pleased with how I'm behaving? Or right, yeah. it, you know, how do you teach yeah. a, how do you teach a child the letter N? <laughs> how right. do you say, like N is M or N like, Oh, um, uh, and, and personality, yeah. like you're saying, the expressiveness. Um, I have, I have to wear a mask for school, but I, I had to get the clear one. Cause like, I'm a joker. I don't know if you could tell. And, <laughs> But people just think I'm being a jerk. If you can see my face, I got this big smile on. Like, I just want to, you know, I just right. want to, 
you know, it's like my, my whole personality is, is my face. And, and, and like you're saying, like, how do you know somebody's, it's not just word. It's about uh, connection, right. facial expressions. I'm sorry. It's your interview. Yeah. <laughs> no, <you're right>. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So the fear, um, where do you think that fear comes from? What's, what's the source, the main source of that? Um, I think that it is, a lot of it is from the media. You know, the mainstream media is, a lot of it is just spreading fear and, you know, making sure that people fall in line and do these mandates, these things that need to be, you know, done to prevent them from getting this horrible virus, which, you know, um, I think that although nobody wants to get sick, they have to start looking more into, you know, the, the, the data that's showing that most people are having a mild case. And, you know, most people that are having a severe or critical reaction to it have like 2.3 something comorbidities, um, you know, and other things. So, you know, the reason why everybody is masking and wanting to follow this mask mandate is because they're fearful because they don't want to get a deadly virus when we really, what we know is that it's the fatality rate is actually pretty low. So it's, they're just believing what they hear. And instead of doing the research and looking into it for themselves to get some, you know, some insight. And a lot of people are busy. They don't have time to do the research that it takes to get to the facts and to the truth. So they just blindly trust, um, you know, the, the news that's telling them and depending on where they're getting their news from, I think that's where the fear comes from. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, okay. So we, we kind of, uh, got a couple questions in there. So hold on, let me just do a hard reset. Um, okay. So please make me happy and tell me that this is true. Are there kids in school who maybe it's the, the rebellious type, the guy who always kind of just questioned it, had a problem with authority is, are there kids who you, is there a kind of that culture of like people trying to get away with it and are questioning or not understanding and how are, are they disciplined? And because, you know, we go to school and basically we learn to recite and respect authority. Like you can't question authority. Um, I think that's the number one rule in school, which I think we need to change. A, that's a totally different topic. But are there, are there those of that mind and not talking about like influence through parents, but are there's Kids are going, I don't understand this. Are there, is there anybody that you see? And then uh, if there is, like, how is that met by your, by fellow teachers and things like that? Um, it's so funny because if this was, you know, years ago when I was in school, I would have been there. Me and you, we would have been in class, like the rebels, like, wait, where am I? What yeah. is this? <laughs> it would have been me. Right. Um, but I'm not seeing too many kids, um, doing that you know and honestly if there were a lot of them or if there were more cases I wouldn't know too much about it because those things are handled with you know disciplinary action and all that is completely separate from me at the school nurse thank god um so that goes to the principal okay. but I you know I've had many of kids who don't want to wear it who may express that to me in the nurse's office um and you know I think that most kids are just trying to do what's right. They're just trying to follow the rules. Nobody, they don't want to get in trouble. So whether they want to do it or not, I think most kids are following it and, you know, going with whatever they're, they're told to do. And it's funny because I have three kids and my two oldest, one is 12 and one is 10. And my oldest is such a great, I mean, they're all three of my kids are awesome, but my oldest is so obedient and he is just all, since he's been a baby, he just does whatever you ask him to do. And he's so awesome. And my daughter is so awesome too, but she is just like me. And she wants to question everything, everything. Yeah. and she wants to know why, how come, and if there's other options besides the one I gave, you know, so all of, you know, I think there's just different personalities out there. There's people out there that are just, um, you know, they, they take a longer time. They, they, they question things and, we need the people that question things to, to not be quiet. We need you guys to rise up and to wake the people up who are just following. And, and you know, we all need to stand up for, for the truth here and try and shine light on it. Yeah, I think one of the saddest 
things is, you know, I have friends who, who don't like masks. They're not as loud as I am, but they just say, you know, I don't want confrontation. I'll wear it. And it's like, ah, oh, geez, just, uh-huh. we need some confrontation here. Um, yeah. Okay. So what about, are there any students in the school who are medically exempt? Does that, does that exist in your world? Is, is anybody not allowed to wear a mask? No, not that I know of in my district. We haven't had any medical exemptions. Okay. Um, not that I know of. So if there is one, I could find out. But um, we haven't had any medical exemptions. I would assume that I think that a lot of people chose because there's an option to do remote and, you know, or hybrid then I think that a lot of those people who maybe would have been a medical exemption are not staying, school, staying home. Right? They don't want the, uh, the headache. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So we, we, when was the moment that you said, you know what? I got to enough is enough. I've, I've seen enough. The, the kids are having a tough time. It doesn't make any sense. And you know, I'm up, I got to stand up. What, when was that moment? And, and, was there something that kind of clicked in your head? Yeah. Um, well, what happened was, and I've told this story a couple of times, is the kid with, who was wearing this handkerchief mask for two weeks. Um, I had seen so many misuse of the, of the masks, which, you know, like I said, it's not about the effectiveness of the mask. It's about the safety of the mask because I don't feel either way is effective. Um, but... You know, I've seen kids come down to the nurse's office after vomiting, wearing a mask that's filled with vomit because, you know, they thought it was too scary to walk down the hall without a mask. So they decided, you know, right. stuff like that or dirty ones or, you know, messed up ones that they've been wearing for, for, for weeks or days without washing them. You could tell that they haven't been washing them, right. you know, but but the straw that broke the back was the case with the kid who came in and he said he couldn't breathe in his mask and it was the handkerchief mask that was tied around his neck and it was tied so tight that he couldn't pull it up over his neck at off of his face to get it off. So he said he was wearing it for two weeks. So I ended up having to cut it off because the knot was too tight. Um, I wasn't the one that cut it off. It was another nurse, right, right. but um, we threw it away. And at that moment I was like, this is, this is so much like I can't sit back and not say anything anymore. Like, So that's when I started to message my supervisor and just let her know, like, look, I've seen this district wide. Like, this is happening everywhere in every school. These kids are not safe wearing these masks. They're not wearing them right. And it has a potential to not only, you know, continue to harm them emotionally and developmentally and mentally, but physically. Like, this is not good. Um, So that was was when I decided that I was going to make a stand against this and try and make a difference for the kids. Okay, so then they suspended you. Yeah, they suspended me. Um, but it wasn't because I, I brought up my concerns. Um, it was because I wasn't wearing my mask on Friday and Monday when I went to work. So they, you know, I think that they had planned to maybe just ignore me and let me, you know, the, the response that I got from my supervisor was, well, okay, but... It's mandated by Governor Murphy, and we are going to, you know, fulfill those mandates, which includes wearing masks. So, um, she covered her track. She did her due diligence. She she yeah. gave orders. Yeah. Well, okay. So, <laughs> so let, let's talk about that Friday when you wore you didn't wear the mask. What was the reception there from other teachers and other students? Because that was I, I don't wear a mask, and every time I walk in a store, it's like I'm a celebrity. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I think I'm the most well-known face in in uh, in in Barnegat. Not because I'm famous, but I'm the only face you see walking around in public. Uh, what was it like? Uh, the interactions? Did anybody say anything to you? Did anyone give you like a, a wink, like "Hey, good job," you know, or something like that? Or what did the kids say? Um, the kids didn't really. They, I mean, they were. They didn't really notice it, I don't think. Maybe they did. They must have noticed it, but nobody really said anything to me about it. Um, I had to. I made sure that I gave everybody a big smile when they came in, <laughs> and uh, you know, I went to. I had to send a couple children home that day on Friday, and you know, just for like other things, like minor things. And so I would 
take them when I send a kid home, I walk them to their parent mm-hmm. because now we can't have parents come in the building. Right. <laughs> so I will take the child to the front of the building and check their ID, the parent's ID and, and give the child over. And the principal's office is um, right next to the door. So she saw me bring multiple children out without my mask on and speak to the, to the parent. So she did come in during the day on Friday, just to let me know that, I was not being, you know, I was insubordinate because I wasn't wearing my mask and that I was expected to wear it. Right. So I just let her know that I was choosing, you know, respectfully that I was choosing not to wear it and I understood. So that was it. And I think maybe they were thinking what's going on with Erin because I did see a couple of teachers and they were like, she's not wearing a mask, you know, but, but nobody said anything to me specifically that day. Okay. Okay. So has anybody reached out to you from, 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 from the district, uh, to your associates or in a positive way? Yeah, I've gotten so much support, um, from mostly from parents. I think that, you know, before I, before I was suspended, I actually sent out an email to a lot of the staff in one of the buildings and I sent an email that had a letter from American Frontline Stock with the research document, and I encouraged them all to stand up and to make a stand for their ki- for the kids, and you know to take off their mask. I my email was deactivated pretty much after that, so I don't know what the response was to it. But okay. I did get a couple responses that were really um, in support, and they were like, "Your thoughts are exactly my thoughts." Like I. I'm 100% in agreement with you, you know, stuff like that. But um, I only got a couple back before my email was deactivated. Right. Um, <clears throat> some of the other staff there um, have in person told me that they agree with me before I made the decision to go maskless. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they just are afraid to stand up because, you know, they always say, don't make waves. We just have to go with it. Be careful. You're not tenured, you know, and if we're not tenured, we can get fired. You know, they can cancel you at any time. Right. So it's just most people, especially in the education world, they're just doing what they're told and, you know, and following the rules and trying not to do something outside of the lines. But for me, I just couldn't do it anymore. I don't want to be complicit in this because I do feel like it is, a form of child abuse. Yeah. Um, and so I don't want to be complicit in it anymore. And I feel like even though I don't, I didn't agree with it all along, I still was allowing it by not standing up for it. So I don't want to allow it anymore. Right. You know, somebody has to stand up. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say to a parent who's listening to this? Who's, who has been sending her kids to school with the mask on, shopping with masks, parks in the masks, um, and 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 maybe they, they hear this or you know hear hear what's coming and 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 they're, they're feeling a little strange about it. They they're starting to think you're starting to wake up a little bit. How do we gently wake them and and show them how important it is for our children to stop living in fear and to question things that don't make sense? Uh, what would you say? Not as a um, adversary but how do we help these people yeah you know i think that and i feel bad for these people who really have so much faith in the mask um because i just i honestly feel like they've been deceived um and it's hard to break people away from such a lie that they really hold to be true because they've been told it by so many people that are that they think you know are highly esteemed or respected so if someone is wearing, you know, having their child wear a mask and they're questioning it, I would tell them to keep questioning it, to do the research for themselves, to to realize that this is harming their child. You know, talk to your kid and ask them, how do you feel about this? Is this making you feel a certain way? And I, I can guarantee you that they're going to tell you that it makes them nervous. It makes them scared. It's you know, it's uncomfortable. They, you know, the kids are not enjoying the masks, and it's it's scary, you know, for them as kids. Let me let me challenge you right there. Um, I always have a conversation with somebody who does masks. I'm just gonna, you know, uh, throw a challenge at you. 
I said that too. I, I was talking to a friend. I said, listen, talk to your kid and, and um, ask her, ask, the, ask your daughter um, if you're, you know, if the mask bothers you, if you like wearing it, you know, if it's uncomfortable, what are your feelings at the mask? Be candid. Right. And uh, she sent me a video and, and, and uh, you know, daughter, she didn't say, I don't like it, you know, but my thought on that is why would my son or daughter, if I tell them that they're going to one die from COVID two get me sick from COVID or three, get some random guy, some random person sick. Uh, uh, and it's constantly beat into your head as I'm your authority figure. You have no reason to question me. Why would that child then say, <laughs> no, I don't like the mask, you know, or does that make sense? Like that's a, Right. I don't think that's a fair, I don't think that's a fair question. It's, it's like, do you like wearing shoes? Well, I don't like my feet getting hurt. You know, like, I don't, I don't, does that make sense? I may have went off. Yeah, I think, I think you make a valid point. I mean, it depends on where, where their yeah. kids listen to their parents and they, they get their ideas and their understanding of the world from how it's described to them and, and demonstrated from how their parents view it. So, you know, if mom and dad are saying you got to wear that mask because you're going to give us COVID or you're going to kill grandma if you if you don't wear it, you know, then of course they're going to be like, I'm wearing the mask. It's This is the mask that we need to wear. So I think it is, you know, do we really want to be, that's not true, first of all. So we have to really try and get rid of these lies or, you know, debunk these lies with people and so that they can have a different outlook on it and see that, um, you know, with the transmission for, from kids, but that's another thing. So I guess what I would say is stop putting that pressure on your child. Yes. Stop putting that, um, that responsibility on your child, because then when grandma does die, was it me, mom? Did I do it? Was it because I give, do you really want that on your child's, you know, heart? I think that it's damaging to be talking to your kids like that and to be, you know, expecting them to understand or to to, to be putting that much faith into yes. a device that just isn't able to give you that kind of protection. Yeah, like I don't know if that answers your question. Hundred percent. Like, I, like I said in the beginning, I was I'm worried for my children. That's all I care about, right? It's once you have kids, it's all that matters for me, anyway. So you know, we locked down the whole bit. We didn't have, we never wore a mask. We just didn't leave the house, you know, because whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, once we kind of woke up to it. Uh, you know, we, we went outside. We, it was great. It was like uh, retirement. You know, I woke up late. I had a big breakfast. We went for a walk and maybe I'd die later. You know, like it was great. Uh -huh. and, but every day and then as the weeks and months went, my son is saying, when's the virus going away? When's the virus going away? And I would be like, hey, uh, you, know, it's, you know, we're figuring it out. It, it, it's coming. It was like explaining Santa Claus. And I, I just kept trying to make it fit into this like thing and i couldn't you know uh -huh. and and uh and the other thing was it was really annoying because it's like I, how many times am i gonna explain i don't know man i'm not a scientist you know but i i, I finally snapped i said you know what theo no uh my son's theo I said theo it's not it's not going away the the germs they're not going away virus is not going away the sickness is not going to go away now he's five but he needs to understand that you know you, i didn't want him to have that burden of Touching his hands, I ran him one time. I ran him into the house because he touched—I don't know—something something on the ground. And I, it's like the most embarrassing moment in my life because I was like freaking out. You know, I was like, "Oh my god!" And I fell for it. But I don't, and and that was the main thing. Like, I don't want him to think that. It, what, what if he he? What if he gets a cold? What if right. he gets, like the next time one of these kids gets sick? What the hell are they? What the? What are they thinking about? Are they, like, oh, is this it? Is this the call? That's what I feel like, and I get a sore throat now. So, right. you know, it, it always. Oh man, this must be it. Now, right. now but I, I'm able to use logic and reason and experience and and Google. But one of my son is laying in bed with a sore throat, and he heard that was one of the symptoms, and now he's terrified all night. He's just lying awake, terrified that he might kill mom and dad. <laughs> right. it's, it's a horrible burden that we're putting on our kids yes. and I just I, I, I hope it stops I hope people start waking up because we, we can't do this we, we really are damaging a generation and we need to we need to stop doing what we're doing we need to open our eyes 
you know, we need to be praying for softened hearts and eyes to see and ears to hear the truth and that it would just come to an end with this because we really need to help our kids. Uh, amen. All right, let's finish up with this. The event. Talk about the event. Give me your call to action here. What do you need? What do we need to do for you? And what's yeah, going on? I mean, right now I am just looking for support. Um, I am getting a lot of that from the community. I'm getting a lot of that from people um, reaching out. I've actually even had people um, just asking me, like, what do you need? What do you need? And that's something that I'm just trying to be better at asking for because I do – I do need support, but um, asking for help is not something that I'm used to. Like, I'm a very uh, independent, like, you know, I can do it all type of person. Right. So, I guess just keep keep uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to be hopefully creating a web page soon that I can share out. And then I can, you know, put needs there and you guys can respond if you're able to help with, you know, organizing, you know, different things, um, for me. Um, I'd like to start, uh, doing more rallies even after the 10th. So just the, the first one right now, what I guess I could ask for is for people just to show up on the 10th in Manahawkin. And what it is, is a board meeting. And we're just going to let people know that we're not alone in this, not wanting to be masked anymore. We want our kids to be unmasked. We want uh, the district to make it an optional thing for kids and for staff to, if you don't want to wear a mask, you don't have to. And it is, masks are mandated under an EUA. So legally, we really should have a choice as to whether we want to participate in that type of a clinical experiment or not. So, you know, that's the goal. If you can show up on the 10th at about 1000 McKinley Ave in Manahawkin, um, starting at four thirty, and I'm not sure how long it'll go, but that would be great. Roger that. Yeah, you know, uh, there's there's a million moms out there. There's a, a, a there's a million moms out there, uh, Mama warriors. Uh, uh, I've been in, entrenched in that. My my fiance, she's you know she's she's in all those groups. There's a million of us out there, and mm -hmm. you know we all can't be you. We all can't be in a position to make a stand where it counts, right? I cannot wear my mask to Wawa and nobody <laughs> cares. But, you know, you made a statement and, and it needs to be addressed uh, to move forward. And like I said, there's a million mama warriors out there and, and patriots and we need to take advantage of this and, and, and show up and support when it matters. And that's, right. we, and, and that's it. Like this is a, on the 10th. If this is important to you and it should be important to you, you need to show up. Right. Yeah. Show up. And then, you know, we can have, we'll have some more information there about where we're going next and what, what the next step is, because this is, this is just the beginning of a movement. Yes. You know, we need to stand up. We need to, you know, band together. And like you said, there's a, there's a warrior group out there and it's the moms because us mama bears, we know that this is hurting our kids and we're not going to let it happen anymore. And if we band together, the mom, the bazillion moms out there, we can really make a difference and we need to band together and work to work towards that goal. Well said. Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I wish you luck. We're going to post this up and everybody, I'll be posting information about Aaron. Aaron, I'm going to let you go and I'll call you back in a minute, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for joining us. That was Aaron Pine, Stafford Township School Nurse, uh, standing up for what's right, saying no to the mask. Please come out and support her. I'll be posting information uh, about the rally, about the board hearing in uh, Manahawkin uh, on the 10th of May. Please come out and show support. This is an opportunity for us to start pushing back about uh, against the tyranny that is now the state of New Jersey. Thanks.